Hello, welcome and good evening to another Let's Code MS-DOS session, this time with a little filler episode. And this is regarding a topic that I got a question about in the YouTube comments, so it's always worth leaving a comment if you have questions. I will try to answer them and sometimes the, uh, the topic is even complex enough to warrant another episode or some explanatory video. And today's topic was that uh, one viewer said he or she doesn't really understand what I'm doing in the different programs with the sign tables. And a sign table, well, we can have a look here at the code that I prepared. I used this in quite a few programs, um, for example, in the copper program, where I display copper bars. They are animated by using sign tables. So the motion here is a sine wave. And if you don't know what a sine wave is, then read up on that on Wikipedia. But I think you should have learned that in school. Uh, it's basic tri trigonometry. There was also a very nice video today on, was it number file, I think? explaining um, what the sine function, how the sine function can be interpreted. Um, I probably will link to that with a card. And yeah, uh, it's a very basic thing, especially for doing animations and similar things. And yeah, and we are using sine and cosine tables here because actually computing the sine and cosine is very expensive. Let's have a look here at the 8087 instruction set. The 8087 is the floating point coprocessor of the PC, basically. And back in the day oh, when we had DOS machines before the 486, not every machine would have a coprocessor. And uh, if we look here for the fsyn fu function, first of all, um, F sine and cosine on the FPU were introduced only with the 387, so the coprocessor to the 386. And this would take anywhere between 122 cycles and 771 cycles. Compare that to a simple move operation or um, some simpler operations like set protect mode, which take only a couple of cycles. So calculating the sine and cosine even with a coprocessor is extremely expensive, extraordinarily expensive. Loading the value from memory is always much faster on those computers. And the 8087 and the 287 didn't support this instruction directly, so you would have to code your own approximations using uh, some kind of mathematical tricks. But we won't deal with that because we will have an implementation in Turbo C that does that for us. However, um, we want to make it faster, so we use these tables so that we can simply look up the sign values in a table instead of computing them. And I ended up with using some expression like this, which, fair enough, looks pretty complicated, but isn't that complicated at all. I'm gonna plot the function make a graph, basically, an animated graph of what it looks like. And usually you would say, well, why don't you just take the cosine, the cosine of the value, and put that in the table. We can do that. Um, the, the i runs from 0 to 256, because I want to store 256 values. And when I do this and run this thing, then we get something that looks more or less like a flat line with sometimes a little dip in there and it's running at the top of the screen and it doesn't look nice at all. Okay, um, this is because the cosine is producing values between minus one and one. So that will shift maximum two pixels. And the same goes for the sine because um, sine and cosine are just shifted by a certain amount in the horizontal axis basically. So let's make the amplitude of this function larger. And the amplitude can be changed simply by multiplying with something. So if I multiply by 10, I should get something that is 10 times higher in the vertical direction. So doing that, yes, now it's not one line anymore, but it's sort of like a scatter plot of 
fonts of dots. And that is because we give input values between 0 and 256 into this function. And that's not how the sine and cosine are defined. The sine and cosine are defined in radians. Radians is a measure of angles and uh, one full circle, that is one 360 degree angle, is 2 pi radians. So actually um, something of the size 2 pi is expected here. So if you want to describe one full circle, after which the cosine repeats itself, because it's a periodic function, so we only need to store this, we can do something like 2 times pi. This will give us one full circle. But if you just do this times i, of course, we get well something even worse here. Um, we get garbage again. What we actually want to do is um, we want to have a value between 0 and 2 pi and we get that by dividing i by 256. 0.0. This is important otherwise um, this will be an integer division and this will be always 0 or 1. So if I first of all delete this, if I do this then I will get uh, for i equals 0, I get 0. For i equals 1, I get 1 200 over 256. Um, and then 2 over 256, so a, slightly, a number that is slightly getting bigger every step. And in the end here, I will get 256 over 256, which is 1. Then we have the full circle, basically. But only from 0 to 1. Uh, if we do this, this already looks better. We get a relatively smooth function. But suddenly it drops off, because we're only going from 0 to 1, and not from 0 to 2 pi, which is roughly 3.28, uh, 6.28, uh, because it's twice 3.14, roughly. So if we multiply this by 2 pi, we get something anywhere in between 0 and 2 pi. Running this will give us a pretty smooth function. However, it's running out of the screen for some reason. And that is because the cosine gives us values between minus 1 and 1. So if it goes minus 1, then it will run out of the screen and draw up here, and then it comes down back again and goes back up. So we need to do something more. We need to take whatever is in here whatever the cosine returns, and add the number 1 to it. Because then the negative minus 1 becomes 0, which is the top of our screen, and the plus 1 becomes plus 2. And that times 10, we get something in between 0 and 20. So we should get something relatively large on the screen. And indeed, we, we get something in the first 10% of the screen. A very nice smooth cosine function, which looks pretty nice, doesn't it? However, if I want to um, use the whole screen width to draw something, I need to scale this a bit further. And um, usually you will use some power of 2 that you multiply it with, but we want to draw on the screen. So this is why I end up with this down here. So um, our screen is 200 pixels in height. We are producing something between 0 and 2 here. If I multiply the 2 by 100, I will get 200. So this whole expression will give me something between 0 and 200, which perfectly fits the uh, 200 scan lines on my screen. If I run this, I should get a full screen cosine function, of course, with a little bit of holes in there because um, our resolution here is not that high and the jumps between each pixel will be a bit larger than one pixel. But as you can see, it is a very perfectly fine cosine function. And yeah, it works. We can increase or decrease the frequency, of course, um, by actually tweaking uh, the parameter that we put into here. For example, I can 
not go from 2 pi times i divided by something. I can either multiply here by a certain factor like times 4 to increase the frequency. Then I get a high frequency cosine curve if I want to have like faster animations. Or I can make it even slower. I can do times 0.5. Then I get this very wide slow curve. And actually it doesn't fit in our table anymore. That's why there's a jump. But we don't want that. We want exactly this. Because we can scale it later. Um, because now we have a perfectly uh, periodic function. Whenever you run out of the array and start at the beginning, you will get something that is periodic. So, which is why um, you would compute the sine table and the cosine table like this. And then you can use it in a function. This is the function that I was drawing. I'm just taking the x-coordinate and see that it wraps around to the left side once we leave the 320 pixels. And on the y-axis we plot the cosine function. And instead of doing frame mod modulo 256, we can do something like uh, increase the frequency here, frame times 2. This will give us a shorter frequency. Or I can take it times 8 maybe. Yeah, and this will give us a... <laughs> of course the resolution then gets worse. Um, but, as I said, um, we can even do uh, times 0.5 will not work, because uh, this is an illegal operation, because you can't use uh, float values to index something, but we can right shift by 1, this is the same as dividing by 2, or we can just write divide by 2, that will also work. And then we get a nice low curve again. Of course, due to the quantization, we will get a few uh, gaps here and there, but for animations, this is good enough and it's extremely fast. And you can even pre compute multiple sign tables because they're pretty small for different resolutions. Then you need to, of course, store more samples, for example, but that's good enough for us here. And then we can, of course, use both uh, values to plot. Uh, different paths. Here I take the sine for the x direction and the cosine for the y direction without any manipulations. And let's change that here. And taking these two functions like that gives us a very important function that you all know, the circle. This will just draw a circle, which is of course the aspect ratio is not correct. For that we would need to scale the uh, x direction be also 200 pixels wide. So if we want to have a perfectly square circle, basically a square circle, then of course that's not true, but uh, with, with the same height as width, we need to put a 120 here because actually in the 320 by 200 mode the pixels are not square, but they're a little bit squished. So if we do that we get a perfect circle, which is also quite nice. And um, for example you could use that to scroll the pan the screen in, in a circular motion or some objects, whatever you like. Um, I have done a few examples in the other videos. And with another function you can even draw so-called Lissajou uh, graphs by manipulating the frequency that you put in there and use different uh, phase shifts and cosine is already phase shifted by a quarter circle. And if we use that we get actually quite nice patterns. One such example is here. This is one of the Lissajou figures, but you can draw many more. And yeah, this is very, you can draw very nice figures, you can animate stuff, and it's obviously much faster because this is basically just loading one value from memory, which we can look it up what this takes roughly. Um, these are the integer opcodes, let's see what a morph is actually a simple morph from memory to a register takes something between 13 plus on or 3 cycles on a 286 and 13 plus something on an 8088 which is at least one order of, order of magnitude faster than uh, what 
we get with the F sine. I mean, if you compare with the 386, it's only two cycles, and we had at least 200 cycles for the 387. So that's even two um, orders of magnitude faster. So there's no question that this is actually pretty useful, I would say. Yeah, and there are quite a few demos um, which use this trick. I think every demo actually that uses some kind of animation will use this trick. And I will show you a couple on the Amiga where you can see these nice laser shoe figures. And otherwise, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something. Make sure to share, like and subscribe so that you don't miss out any new coding episodes. And please leave a comment. As you see, sometimes something good comes out of it. And you can also support me on Patreon or on Ko-Fi or via PayPal. Links are all on my channel page. Uh, if you can't do that, that's all very nice and dandy. And I hope you just enjoy this. And uh, yeah, hope to see you next time. That's it for today. Goodbye.